Welcome to IRL Alpha. My name is Beganbot and I'm your host and we're here to talk about all things NFT and Web3. However, we're not here to lecture you. We're here to fight with you. Fight with the panel, fight with the audience. So how it's going to work, if you're a person in the audience and you disagree with something that is set up here, if you're in the first two rows, raise your hand. There's microphones for you. Talk into the microphone. Give us your take. If you're in the back, stand up, walk to that microphone right there. There's a camera showing you. That way the people at home can hear you as well. If you are at home, type in the Twitch. No, it's not Twitch chat. Geez, we're on YouTube now. Sorry, no more Twitch. Twitch is dead. YouTube, IRL underscore alpha. If you're in the back, you don't feel like going to a microphone, you can also talk in that uh, YouTube chat as well. We just have a couple requests. One, do not chill your bag. Two, do not tell us your life story. Three, do not start rambling on and on. We got a lot of people here, so we want to get to takes quickly. If you start talking too long, you'll hear a sound something like this. That means wrap it up. If you keep going even longer, you'll hear something probably like that, and people will start booing. You don't want to get booed here. We're here to be friends. Okay. Now, say it again. Does that happen? Oh, yes, it is. 100% <laughs> happened. It has happened. Oh, yes, it's been bad here. It's mostly been Troy, but he takes it really well. Okay, he's buying shit coins right now. He doesn't even know we're making fun exactly. of him. Okay, okay, cool. Uh, so, be joy. so before we get started here, uh, if you guys didn't know, this show, we've been running for two years. And at the beginning, it was just a labor of love, but now we're moving into the next phase, which is how do we actually bring in some people that can support us and do what we're trying to do, which is make fun content around all of Web3 and art and tech and all that. So we have two sponsors right now this week. First one, if you guys haven't seen, in the back, there's a machine there. It has a person on there, a little AI girl that is, you know, Someone that I'm in a relationship with. You can be in a relationship with her too. That's from a project called Moon World. It's an interactive sci-fi project. They actually have a, a sci-fi series you can listen to on Spotify. You could actually contribute to audition if you actually do any voice acting. They actually have done auditions on Twitter Spaces, which is pretty cool. And I gotta tell you the truth, like voice acting, it's nice. It's a good life. You sit at home in your pajamas, you say, whatever, my name is Troy, and then they pay you. It's beautiful, okay? So scan them on the side, learn more about them. They also have an NFT, they have a game. It's actually some people who've already run, won Emmys in the Web 2 world coming to the Web 3 land trying to do some cool interactive stuff. Number two, if you haven't seen, there's a bunch of posters everywhere from a particular project that's been around from the very earliest days. That is the Forgotten Rune Wizard Cult. They're ETH OGs. Then they became ordinal OGs inscribing under a thousand. They have comic books you can read right now and get at, at any comic con you've seen. They have games you can play right now. I'm going to Denver tomorrow to hang out with these people because they're the only one that has actual, like, a way to get into Casa Bonita, which is the hottest restaurant in all of Denver. If you didn't know, that's my plans tomorrow here. Definitely check them out. They have games, they have comics, they have everything. They're beautiful people. We're going to host a LAN party here sometime in the next month that's going to be playing their brand new game. Okay. With that, let's get to our panel. First and foremost, someone who I've heard on Spaces since the most early of OG days. I mean, definition of an actual OG and is keeping up and continuing to move into new Spaces. Ed Balloon, I heard you got an actual ordinals drop. What is going on? Yo, what's good? There we go. Thank you. Y'all not loud enough. Yet. Oh. <laughs> hey, y'all. Um, I'm Ed Balloon. I am an artist. Uh, I play around multiple or uh, different different mediums, um, from music performance to visual art to singing, all the things. Um, recently, I am doing a drop uh, on the ordinals blockchain BTC. What's good um, with the incredible collective counterfeit um and yeah uh it will be it's actually a, a music video um that also has stop motion which you know is very difficult if you are familiar with the blockchain um there so uh yeah i don't want to keep going off because there's so many people here but yeah i am ed balloon and looking forward to this panel beautiful thank you yeah we'll definitely talk some about it because like putting any type of video or audio onto ordinals it is painful and i think we have a bunch of people here who try and make art that is high resolution and then you start saying let's go over there and try it out and you go oh my god this is pretty rough here painful. <laughs> next and it's so funny so glad to have you here war hoddle another og in the space who i if you, everyone who knows one of the first rules we have about coming into the IRL office studio is do not respect Paris Hilton. Someone who's actually collected by disrespect. Paris Hilton. Disrespect, Jesus Christ, yeah. not respect. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God, I just broke the number one rule. Jesus Christ. <laughs> rule number one, do not disrespect the You're most OG out. Paris Hilton <laughs> in the space here. You're someone who actually is collected by her as well as a bunch of other great people. Wow. You're making art all the time since you know the early days. What are you doing now? Ooh, I have, um Gosh, just looking at the uh, the art file, um, the Illustrator file, I've been working on a, a Web3 brand since 2000, 2022, and it is definitely time to launch because any longer and I'm going to start to uh, get in a fight with myself. Um, 
So that's really like the big thing, you know, coming from the background of doing startups, branding and marketing, like I'm a, uh, a recovering sneakerhead, um, just former hype beaster. So integrating everything and the way that I've ripped on pop art uh, through War Hoddle, especially like, uh, you know, obvious references, but early Americana um, riffing on the culture in a tasteful way. Nice. I was going to say, you're never a former hype piece. You're always a hype piece. <laughs> I know you're just into something new. Also, like, I don't like those sneakers anymore, okay? This is I Japanese and rare, okay? This is something, wait, I'm, I'm on rare sandals now. All right, things just change, all right. <laughs> for the first time on the panel, very excited. Someone who's been in the space also for a very long time and someone who I always love to hear on spaces talking Thank and having you. intelligent conversations. So I've been asking Cartolucci for, I think, like a year to say, come on the show, finally lined it up here. What's going on? How are you? Good. Can you hear me okay? Oh, yeah. Lean over the microphone. No, you, you're doing uh, good. You're doing good. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you for having me. Definitely. They've been in my DMs for quite a while uh, trying to get me up here. Apologize. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you to my husband. I think son who's watching back at home. Uh, love you, Jet. Um, Patrick. It's, it's been, they're four and one. So they're little guys, need a lot of help. So hats off to him for being the ultimate husband nice. and having me here so I could get yeah. here. Um, but, <laughs> no, you're getting a round of applause, Patrick. Thank you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes, it's a, it's a group effort to get here. So yeah, it's been here for a while. Um, fun fact, War Huddle and I, we actually connected on Clubhouse, but I didn't know. So we went to middle school together. Aww. What? I, the, wait, the funniest part, <laughs> I had been following him on Clubhouse since like January. It wasn't till six or eight months later. He was which, like semi anon. Which year? 2021. I'm um, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, just to clarify. Um, yeah, it's hilarious. We had a mutual friend who was like, hey, Taylor's into NFTs. And I was like, what? What are you talking about? I look up his Instagram and it was like, he is Warhodl. Like, I have been following him for like eight months and had absolutely zero idea it was someone I went to school with. So now we've reconnected. Oh, well, you know, stay yeah. close, sons. But um, yeah, it's been in the industry since the clubhouse days. I um, actually heard about crypto art back in 2018 with Kevin Abosh, his mm. um, crypto rose. So that was one. But I didn't, I couldn't quite understand it. It was an ERC-20. It was more backed by token. I really, it was like too financial. It took me a few years. But um, yeah, photographer in the space. Love it. Love tech and art and where they merge. And I'm so happy to be here. Some of us, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> I was saying, yes, exactly. <laughs> Some of us still don't understand exactly how it all works. Yeah. We're going to figure that out tonight here, okay? And I'm still learning, too. Yes, okay. yes. It, oh, wait. Oh, my God. I fucked up. Can you search Patrick real quick? I don't. There he is. Oh, we already have him. We have 404, him. 404, not We 10. have yeah. him, okay. We, like we always said, every time Patrick's here, we always count our blessings. He's not arrested. He's not in jail. <laughs> he went to Paris. He came back. I heard rumors that China was going to try and pick him up at the airport. He made it through. 404, just another 404 finish, mm -hmm. which, Ed, you helped actually on. Thank you, Ed. Cartolucci was part of here, and then one of my new favorite people in the space, 7871. So yeah. what's going on? Yeah, no, it's good to be back. Um, no, happy to see, uh, uh, I think, 50 submissions for the curation contest. So a lot of artists got featured. I uh, did a small show for them in Paris. Um, but, you know, excited about, uh, you know, kind of what's to come, which is going to be more art writing on the artists that have submitted 404. So... I'll announce that next week or the week after, uh, but going to have, uh, have writers write a weekly article on the artists that have submitted work to the collection to get more uh, contextualization and just more, more about everybody's stories, not just the, you know, the seven dudes making money right now. Hell yeah. Nice, nice. Excited about that. Okay, speaking about the seven dudes making money, we do have to address it because if anyone is out there on Twitter, it's pretty much a D-Gen day, right? Multiple <laughs> airdrops happen. A yeah. bunch of people made six figures. A bunch of people have the worst FOMO you've ever heard about. <laughs> and the conversation is starting. And I think Kath put out this lovely tweet, which it says, Portal Coin is proof that you shouldn't shame artists for farming. Could have made life-changing money. Fund a new studio. Travels, new opportunities. Mint less artworks. Ultimately, an, an opportunity to improve their lives and consequently their art. And this is something that we've talked about a bunch of. Okay, you're an artist. You're a brand. You care about the message you're putting out there. If you tweet, Hey guys, portal coin coming soon. Click the link here. You might be hurting your brand, but if I get a hundred thousand dollars, I don't might you know like I can pay for my art studio and make some art. Fuck my brand. So, may, uh, you know, starting there, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you first. Yeah, this is so <laughs> controversial. That's what we're doing here, Ed. Okay, come on. It's actually really funny. First of all, I didn't know you could do this. I probably would have definitely done it. Okay, um, but also I don't know. Like to be quite honest, it's very difficult to do. Um, I, so it was in the beginning of this year, I was like, you know what? I'm tired of this. 
I'm going to degen. I'm going to get all as much money as possible, and I'm going to buy all <laughs> with the money. And it was just so difficult to do. I just don't, I think it's, there's so many steps, and as an artist, you want to use that time to make art, at least. And I don't know if I sound like an artist right now, <laughs> but like, yeah, like, mm -hmm. I'm like, man, this is just so much to do, and I, I want to put this towards the art. But then you see days like this, and you're like, damn, like 100K, that would have, you know, I could have been able to live off of that, and also I would have been able to, like, you know, help the community. So I don't know. What do you say to that? Also, you just don't know, right? You don't know how things, like, that, I think that's also the thing. Like, yeah. you don't know what the future is or, like, what this is going to do. Is it going to be a rug? Is it going to be, is it, is it actually going to be helpful? Um, yeah, and, yeah, you could have all this time, ruin your reputation, and there's $100, and you're like, oh, no. Exactly, like, like, exactly. And you're like, <laughs> but... I, I don't know, like, may, also maybe if these things were more like helpful for like the artist where it doesn't look like it's, it's messing up our brand too, maybe, you know, but no one cares about us. So, you know, it's like, <laughs> no, we have to be the ones to like figure it out. Like, oh, should we do this? Should we not do it? Are you gonna take the F for the team? Like, there were some artists that did it and they got a lot of money out of, out of it. And I'm like, good for you. But you know, then you're like, damn. Well, if you see them vacationing, <laughs> there's a problem. If you see them making art, I'm like, hell yeah. But if all of a sudden it's like, here guys, here's the new Range Rover, and I'm in the, you know, like it's a problem. But <laughs> well, yeah, it's, then that's, it's that's no that's different than like it's no different than like chasing PFPs. I mean, the Beanie, I think, has a really good point here. Uh, there's for every one of these that goes well, there's 50 or 100 of these that don't go well. And if you're just chasing every one of these, you're just gonna destroy your brand. Yeah. Everyone's gonna unfollow you. Like no. You know, like the handful of people that made a money on this, like, good job, you got lucky, you got the right one, but like, is that a, is that a healthy strategy for artists to pursue? No, it's hard enough to like get your name out there in a healthy way without <laughs> shilling random coins. I said, you saw it a couple months ago with like your mom and all the Solana degen things. I had artists hitting me up in DMs being like, I swear this is the real thing. And there are artists <laughs> that previously I respected and now just, you know, watching it all tank, you're just like, how do you shake that off unless you're Italian? I don't know. Like, yeah. <laughs> can, I, can I just say one thing? A lot more artists are degening than you even realize, first and foremost. Secondly, how is this any less, like, poo-pooed than flipping art? You know, because, uh, I mean, Speak artists are supposed it. to be making money, right, so that we can put it back into our art. I mean, I just, I can't wrap my head around people thinking that this is, like, bad for your brand. Like, having a brand doesn't get me paid as an emerging artist. Well, you know I, what I, I mean? Have, I have an uh, argument. No, right. Who am I? I? <laughs> yeah, I think the emerging artists are the ones who should be avoiding this more than anybody else. They I need mean, the money the most. That's who knew, exactly. Yeah. You need the, the rich get richer. <laughs> you need the money the most, but the chances are you're going to strike out. You're going to do 100 of these things to get one that works. And in the meantime, you're going to you're going to pollute whatever idea people have of you by shilling a bunch of like shit coins out there like it's hard enough for people to look at your art and be like oh i remember you as an artist right that's ultimately what you want you want people supporting you mike well no, no, no talk into the you hold the microphone while you're Sorry. there that's you got, you got a voice I, like you got it yeah got it, it. I she got a yell. voice <laughs> um, jen's not here so i get to yell um, yeah i <laughs> i would say you know i got into nfts and artists didn't respect me because i was doing nfts so now the people that are in F NFTs don't respect me because I'm degening. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. We're I a special make space. it make sense. Like, <laughs> literally make it make sense. Funny. Nailed it. That's exactly uh, how it works. Uh, well, also, first. also, just note that a lot of those people are paid to do that. And the perception of like, oh, snap, they made that. Yeah, because they gave them that. They airdrop that. They paid you to look like you have that. And then there's a lot of market maker things. So that's true. there's a lot of perception. Sometimes we overlook because we go, oh, snap, they're making it. I should. That's how they get you, though. That's how you, they you get add, me, though. You're someone's exit up. liquidity. <laughs> <laughs> you're someone's exit liquidity when they paid that influencer, <laughs> that artist. Oh, that's a trusted artist. They get got into that. And sometimes we don't think of that, right, in like the bullish moment. I think we kind of do think yeah. about that, though. But there's also. Uh, on, on okay, try, try. Real hard, real fast. Real oh, fast. Yeah, well, sure. Go ahead, buddy. Love I you, just, though. I mean, categorically, at the at the um, the start of NFTs, become we love you, Troy. He's so you, nice. you are the man, you know. <laughs> but categorically, um, at the start of NFTs becoming mini meaningful out of lockdown, more or less. I mean, not, no disrespect to the early wave of like Crypto Kitties and everything, but I started with 12 followers on Twitter, and so I think brand and timeline um, is really important only because my background of like 
um, at one point was a creative director for Kia and Hyundai. So like everything you saw in dealerships, like I've launched products where one of my deepest like brand mantras is that every touch point matters. So if you're flooding your timeline, um, I remember the day that portal when that, uh, it's like do this, tweet it. And I did it. And then I immediately deleted it. <laughs> and I'm like, it just doesn't. You, and you know, looked in the mirror and were like, who am I? I'm like, I was you an are artist. The man. And then I was like, am I? <laughs> no. um, I deleted it just because. Did you get a nice ear Like, drop? to Patrick's point, there's, there's hundreds of them. And you might see a certain swarm of. Did I what? Did you get a nice eardrop? Are you blessed today? Are you blessed no, but I. I no. Okay. Zero. Yeah. Zero. See, it, see, that's what oh, happens. That's wow. that's the, that's what we have to talk about. See, you can do it and then not be blessed. But he deleted it. You need to keep it up for six months. Oh, you do? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think it's back to. So I want to just because I want to take it back to Margaret's point. Um, like it's hard to it's hard to be successful as an artist. Um, most artists can't make a living in the space. Stuff like this just makes it a little bit harder, and I yeah. don't think anybody needs that. I think also I what is what I get upset with is. There's a lot of money in this space. We can't say that it's not there. And so when we when we see resources go to, and we've seen chains already saying we're gonna top, we're going to like you know fall into the the degen route and start throwing airdrops versus oh we're actually gonna find incentives to actually help artists and things like that. That's where you say, you, you see the the problem here because there's no incentive to actually help artists from that from that place. And you're like okay, what's going on here? Do I have to do this? Okay, so well, so I think I think well I think that's a really good point, and I think I think it's just really important to understand like what's actually the right behavior for a long term successful yeah. career, and what's behavior that's being paid by platforms to push their agenda. And I think like you saw that with OP and Zora, right? Mm -hmm. You have a platform that's taken 60, 40 percent on protocol rewards encouraging people to mint without a like complete abandon having people do stuff that's objectively just not good or healthy for artists and guess what those people who did that all got a huge bag right they all got 23 whatever thousand bucks so now everyone thinks oh i did the right thing but in reality you were doing the wrong thing for your career and the people that were doing that nobody was doing really well at that so now they throw a bag at him. Now it's like, it was that actually the right behavior? And it kind of screws up the whole space. It's still the wrong thing to do. It's just platforms and random entities and VCs are going to give money to people that are per, like helping pursue their objective. Look at this long term. And I feel like you just have to just say, hey, what's most likely to be a good choice long term and do that and then hope it kind of works out. Like you can't be chasing this stuff. But Patrick, wait, wait, long term is really hard when rent is due. Yeah, when you're an no, artist. and I'm, 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 I'm also, I, I, don't, I didn't even do any of this. And I, I tried and I was like, I don't want to make an alt for this. You know what I mean? And I just let it go. You know what I mean? Lazy. But, but. I don't want to, I don't want to disregard the fact that people need to make money and, and that artists do degen and they do stuff. They just do it behind the scenes. And so you can't condemn the people that are doing it up front that, I you know, I, I just, you, it's wrong. I do whatever you want to do. There's I'm nothing. I say it but Margaret you nailed it. You it's can't called a burner you account. Can't, no, I know that. I don't, I, and it's I, have easy. One, I have one now, but I was tired. Okay. And I'm, I'm an artist. I hear you. I'm I was not tired a too. Oh, I'm yes. a DJ and I still don't do it. It's, I have to be so but, honest with this. But, like when artists DJ, it's not like, oh, I want to get this. I mean, Maybe this maybe stuff this, is like picking up change artists. to get hit by a car. No, I'm, I'm you know, being like, honest. Like, it's a lot of us when we DJ, we're like, wait, okay, well, we're gonna get this back and we're gonna help this. Like, at least for me, I'm like, word, I'm gonna get this back and I'm gonna buy art from black artists or artists that are not selling. Yeah. Like, that's that's me and that's kind of my view of when it comes to like a lot of these things. And it's only because I'm like, man, well, this is what they're doing, and clearly the money is going to a place where it's not gonna probably go back into the community. So how about I try to you know take that money and put it back into community. I mean, and I how like is this any different from taking a brand deal or something or selling out? I mean, I don't know. It's 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 all the, it's all the artists should. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> it's hard because like I know I don't like anyone that's been DJing. I I think it's amazing. I wish I could do it better. It just takes too much time. Like I don't. It know, is every time. time I do it, I lose because I you know get a coffee <laughs> and, you, and it's done. <laughs> it's like boom. you're leaving your desk. No, <laughs> exactly. uh, you turn around for thirty seconds. But I don't feel good over. talking about this. I don't feel good um, even saying. Why not, Ed? Yeah, you don't want to reveal but, the real secrets of what it's actually like being an artist out there. Everyone's like, you just make paintings, then collectors well, come from <laughs> up on high, and they say, you're rich now. It's great. But, yeah, I, I think the hardest thing is you really 
I, I don't condone anyone from doing it, but I think there's this like natural psychology, right? It's like, there's so many artists I follow, there's like newsletters I'm on, and I even got a newsletter who usually focuses on art, and then they sent one out a few weeks ago, all focused on blast. And I was like, guys, what are you doing? You talk about art, you have a prestigious brand, I love the content you create, you just sent out just like poo poo. Like, <laughs> like, what is this? It was like, all talking about this, like get the airdrop, this and that, and it's like, that's cool and all, but like, if that's not your audience, like, is that really what you want to speak Talking to? Talking about a Cosmo so, like, Blast email? I love I'm just them, saying. but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say I'm it out loud. We <laughs> know what it is. I'm <laughs> just saying you have, you have, you know, things that we, um, that are actually are talking about art at the same time mm -hmm. they're also talking about airdrops. So, I mean, what are we doing here? Like, you know, what? I, but that's I where I say, like, I there's artists that have, like, shifted to they just, like, all they do is tweet stuff like that. And I'll be honest, I've unfollowed because I'm like, I... I don't mind if you like randomly do something, but when that becomes like all you're chasing, it's kind of like if that's not what your viewers are interested in, then also don't be upset if they unfollow you. You know, for the same reason, you got to kind of go both ways there. That's true. Um, you know, there's um, th there's some discords, let's say, and there are an artist based, but they, you know, they also degen into shit coins and they know each other, and it takes kind of minimal energy. To, to me, because I do a lot of things too that's not just uh, being funny. Like I do music oh, yeah? and yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, please. Oh, okay. I'm 104 <laughs> years old. The point is is that it, when, you, when you're in certain groups and you're trusted, th these are some like, instead of like tweeting stuff and, and ruining your career, covert, like like R Rose, Rosenbaum says. Like when like I Rosenbaum talk about, does, yes, yeah, covert. Yeah, like it, it's just like. What are you like, doing, Troy? You're not uh -huh. gonna mention this. <laughs> well, he just said it himself. Um, but you know, we de into the things, but we get back to work. But I, I know that some artists are just, if they wanna like 100X on themselves, that's all they think about. They don't really care about that, but they're not eating as well. But I think it's a very minimal thing to do than to retweet and and, and wreck your brand let's say and just do it covertly and get back to work i mean i'm uh, that, well, that's so, it. So one thing yeah. people are bringing up a lot and this is so important is that if you are new to this it is a lot of work how do you find the right spaces you're losing every single one you're the the fish that everyone's eating you're the you know what i mean you're the exit liquidity now you can be in troy's situation where he's like it's a private group whatever they post there it's a send okay great it takes a while to get there Right? Yeah, Troy. Now, some people, so, now some people, right, their hobby can be degening, right? We, you can be, I'm an artist, my hobby is degening. The thing is, you can't say, I'm an artist, I'm gonna degen just a little bit on the side. You're gonna get fucked. That's who everyone is saying, yeah. we're gonna rip them off. But you are not a less artist if you're saying, I kinda like, like artists can like gambling. It's allowed, okay? That's yeah. all there is to it. You're allowed to like gambling, you're allowed to gamble, but don't pretend you can do it a little bit on the side. You kinda gotta be tapped in and like it. like. Yeah, the, 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 the way I'll answer that is is that when I got into the space, I didn't do Clubhouse. I said, oh, these IP projects, they don't know anything about story. I've been doing this for years. I'm streamlining to that. So I stayed in the discords and communicated, not extracting, and it was a currency loop. And by virtue of that, I gained trust. And anybody that, you know, and, and all those trust things, I got answers. I got answers to my question help because I had a streamlined focus, not expecting a lot of things, it's just expecting me to be pure. And so I think a lot of people come in here and being one-sided and they're trying to be clever and take rather than being intelligent and being circumspective, right? And that's the problem well, with most of the world. Well, it doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter what artists are interested in outside of making art. That's kind of irrelevant. The problem is, is that you are competing with a thousand other artists out there and there's not a lot of artists that can make money, not yet, right? We have, a, we have a long ways to go before every artist is able to make a decent living relatively easily. Uh, and given how competitive the space is right now, uh, you, again, to kind of Warhol's point, you, you just do yourself a disservice if you're shilling your mom the Solana shitcoin publicly on Twitter, <laughs> because when the collectors are going to look at artists, they're gonna say, okay, of the, thousands of artists I can pick from who's really all in on art. Wait, this guy is talking about random shit coins over here. I like I feel like it's <laughs> it's not a it's not a it's not a deal breaker, but it's it's a it's a negative strike against you for a lot of people. And because of how competitive everything is, like it can really hurt. And I, uh, like Beanie yeah. said, like there's uh, a cost to it. You can either stomach the cost to it or you can't, but I think you should understand what the cost is before you pay it, but there is a cost, and I think that's just something that should be acknowledged. Well, and yeah. zooming out, like, to what Patrick's saying as well, 
we're also lucky to, uh, and I circle back on this every so often, it's like we're also lucky to understand the foreign language that is crypto, mm -hmm. that is Web3, that is this um, another medium, that is this functionality on the blockchain. And I think, you know, we're talking about, you know, DGEN versus, you know, your art purveying, being a art pursuer, art purveyor. Um, it just comes down to what you want to get into. And also that being said about foreign language, like crypto is daunting. Um, NFTs are daunting. And to push the button, you know, to try it out as an artist, um, I think that in itself is such a, a, a huge step. And also to what Patrick was saying is, the thing that blew my mind uh, discovering last year is that like the annual um, Art Basel, like UBS art report, traditional art world report, is that something like 90, it's like 95, 96% of traditional artists in the world don't make more than $9,000 a year from their craft. Yeah, I, I've read that before. There was an article maybe, five or six years ago? Yeah, it was about like $10,000 was what the average living artist makes off their art. Also, and it, of so the one, top oh. 50 artists, uh, only one is a woman. Oh, yeah. So, you're, so that, you're all talking about, then, then why would I not go after the portal airdrop, okay? I'm gonna pass the 100K in the portal airdrop. Yeah, no, but <laughs> to, to round it out, um, I think it just, like for me with crypto, I went, I got lucky um, with, uh, person I was working with in, t in 2017 like sat me down and he's like here's why this is important and I went so deep down the ICO rabbit hole just as a as a person as a DJ um, and then subsequently in 2018 I'm like I had that light bulb like sorry parent my parents are watching the stream but I was stoned um, I was like I was like, if I could come up with a crypto art concept, because I grew up painting, but I'm like, if I could come up with a crypto art concept and receive more crypto, I was like, I'd be on top of the world. So it was always, I started painting Bitcoin soup cans and like, it was a hobby more or less over the years. It was through lockdown, it was through discovering NFTs that it went from hobby to, to meaningful. But it was that understanding of crypto early on. And once you get degen enough, it's like, that is something I'm just interested in. Like the most, and quickly, the most life-changing moment for me with crypto wasn't my early bags because I would like sell them to cover rent and stuff. B&B &B at 80 cents. Um, <laughs> but um, it was being, it was when moon cats were rediscovered and there was like a three, five hour stretch later at night to mint out the rest of them. And then the next like four days I spent in the voice chat and the Mooncats Discord. And then a group of us, and again, this is like what, it just comes down to what you wanna dive into, but a group of us minted out the rest of Curio cards. Some did um, Ether Rocks. Uh, there's a, there's a, a few things, and it was like the 16 year old kid that's like, I think we should all do this. And then we all sort of navigated through it. Um, like, well, even like Shiba. The, the clubhouse rooms, you're gonna see that in 20 years and explain someone, you don't understand what the rooms oh were like. Yeah. We, were also, in, we were in door for two years and then we got this thing and we, it's gonna be, you know, it's-, it's Sorry, I, to see Jim Rohn on my feed or that I posted and Mugatu in the same scroll. I just, so <laughs> Dijon's not part of the game. Like becoming an art, like choosing to dabble in this medium as an artist is something that you're opting into. And then I think what's really important and something in the clubhouse era that really was a paradigm shift for me was Don Diablo in a room, he's like, it's important to understand why you're spending time here and understand are you a, a hobbyist with professional expectations or are you doing what it takes to truly understand it, to truly make something of it? So are you giving it hobby action or or like um how are you going about it and then where are you at with your expectations and that was a big one i was already game on once i sold my first like once my first soup can sold but i don't know just it's understanding why you're dabbling with it um it, it could be art only you know but ultimately 
it's like the creative class, and I just to round it out, the creative class I think is so lucky um, to be like the first use case vehicle of this functionality. I also just feel, like, I mean, I agree with you. Well, I mean. But I also, <laughs> shout out to you. Clubhouse MFers. <laughs> <But> I, also, <laughs> I also just feel like artists, we are the story. I don't even know. It's just like, oh man, we just gotta figure it out. And it can come from a place like when it was the bear market, I won't forget. Oh, you just got to figure it out. Maybe you need to leave. Maybe you need to do all these, all yeah. these things. And so when you have artists trying to figure it out, we're like, we don't want to leave. We want to be here. We want to be able to create. We want to be able to, yeah. to be here. Okay, I guess yeah. we got to try to get these eardrops. Okay, fine. Yeah. I guess we're going to try to figure it out so we can stay here. So, so we can like, figure it out so we can stay here. And I think <laughs> what I also don't get is a lot of times we talk about brand, like, hey, this is too financial. But we also don't have a problem, with, if, we're gonna, if we're gonna take it here, let, let's take it here. We don't have a problem with if an artist is doing, you know, drugs or whatever for the sake of like their brand, right? It's, it's always just like, okay, but that's, that, that seems like it fits the brand. Should it? Like, if we're gonna go there, let's go there. And, 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 I, and I, I do wonder what does that mean when it comes to art? Oh, maybe it's supposed to be this way because that's part of art. It's supposed to look like it's, um, struggling, it's supposed to look like it, it, it needs help, it's supposed to look like it's on its last breath. Yeah. Maybe that's the culture that we need to like get going hey, You're against. not supposed to be a rich I'm not artist. saying that the DJ and airdrops is the type of culture mm -hmm. that we want, but I am trying to say like, hey, that's, when we talk about branding and artists and, and things like that, how artists have to watch out about that, we also need to watch out about how we, like the pressure that we put on artists when it comes to branding. So, so let's, this is actually great, because this is a great segue that I wanted to talk about anyway, because Patrick, he puts out these controversial tweets, he puts this one out, <laughs> and guess what? It goes to the conversation, okay? Anonymous alt accounts are for maximum extraction. If it was the artist's best work, they just mint it. And I feel like the use of alt really yeah. ties into this conversation, because if you're an artist right now, there's the practice, my final, these are my pieces I'm working so much on. I might be working on some technique, a meta happens, I'm deep in the DJ space, and I'm like, Oh, I can make some money actually making art. I'm not going to ruin Sully the brand. I get to explore this world. And then maybe later on, I reveal that's me and that ties to the story. But it's like, if you are, if you're great, if you're rich, don't worry about it. No alts. But if you see, hey, this is going to hurt my brand right now. I know this idea is a good idea. However, it doesn't match to what my collectors want. Why would I not just make an alt, do it? Boom. I'm back to working on my other art. <laughs> Full time. Also, want to say not all drugs is bad. By the way, yeah, of course, <laughs> real quick, I, it, it goes back. It's the whole idea. Like when when you said that y'all went to middle school together and you followed Warhol, it transcends what it really matters. Like yeah. your friends, it's just a uh, that's his name. You loved it separately from knowing that. This is the same kind of infrastructure in a way that if you want to do an alt, you can succeed that way. It's like wearing when when Greek tragedies would happen, they'd wear masks. You're at, they're actually expressing more because you can't see their expression in their face. And it's, it's kind of like you get to go somewhere. It's like doing a radio show. You don't see the face, but you get to express more. Those it, kind of things. Also, are you someone's like friend if they degen into something or if some, you do something so out of pocket of your brand? Are those really like your <laughs> followers? You know, mm. like like Ed is rocking Jamie's corn dog shirt. I am. You know, that's not Ed's. That's not Ed's. I'm shirt, selling a, but my I, Ed I know artwork who Jamie now. Is. She's happy. a dope videographer. <laughs> that was sold for a dollar, right? So is that his brand? No, it's Jamie's brand, but she's the homie. Like, so it, you, you know, like. We gotta, but that, we that makes Ed sound cool, though. I mean, that, you just described that. I'm like, that corn dog shirt is already cool. cool. So, yeah. And it just became the same cooler. Branded, good so they're both brand. cool. But you know what I mean? Like, there's a separation of brand and personality. Yeah. And yeah, there's a fine line. And you can say, this is not part of my brand. But it also ties into you. And you want real followers. You want real supporters. You know, and if you pivot in a company as a person, if you start to mm. do acting after you did music, you know, like your, your true fans will follow that. And you can be fluid. Like, we can be fluid. Right, we have to do. That's what person, artists are. Uh, but, that's why you see artists in tech. <laughs> yeah, but, like, but we're, listen, listen. we're that fluid. We could go to tech too. So, that, but, that's a real creator. But if I know right now, if I know right now, I'm a big gen artist. I'm doing, not even big. I'm doing okay. I'm building my name up there. I want to become bigger. And I go, ooh, I got a great AI idea. If I do it with my gen art name, everyone's gonna be like, what the fuck? You're pivoting your AI. You're lazy now. I say no. If I'm a new name with my AI, I can prove to people you like this without my name associated with it. A brand new thing. People respond when I go, that's me. You like my AI art? Tricked you? I'm good at gen art. I'm good at AI. I can get out there, experiment without the baggage of your name. All of us have baggage associated with whatever we create. That's how it is. And no matter what, like 
If, if you've never made music before, you put out music, everyone goes, you're making music now. Okay, great. Ed makes music, so no one's like, oh, he's making music now. It's part of his They're brand. Like, oh, but Began, here we Began, go. Began, no, Began, right? this just sounds like you're afraid of criticism, though. Like, no, I'm if, not afraid of anything. You, but if you really <laughs> if you really were about what you were making, you would put it out there, and, and you're following, even if they gave you backlash. I mean, artists deal with this all the time in every genre, right? You do a bad movie, people hate you, but they forget <laughs> about it. You make a bad record, people I, don't like it, but then they forget about it, move on, you put something else out. It's part of what makes you an artist and having these ups and downs, experimenting and being able to create what you believe in at the time, regardless of who, who likes it or whatever, that's... That's literally what being an artist is. No, I, no, no. That, well, I totally, well. You're going to agree with her? Then you're going to well, be on just, my side. I'm, <laughs> no, I'm, well, I'm looking at what Patrick responded to. I've, mm -hmm. I made an alt because the art is totally different from what I'm known for, and this space hates experimentation. And then Patrick says, the expectation that artists are brands is something that needs to be broken. And I agree. Like, you, like a, you can create in your bedroom and that be the... the <laughs> but that be the end route of what you created, right? Or like you can put something out there. You could, you could mint as we're, you know, to be savvy with the language, you could mint an NFT and airdrop it to your family only, and then that be the end of it. And that is the fulfillment. So again, it just, uh, it's not going back to the, and I mean to cut you off, or I hope I didn't, but. You did, it's fine though. Go for it. It's <laughs> no, just no. understanding the difference between hobby and um, profession and like why, you know, why are you putting yourself out there? Because you could mint it for yourself. But no matter what, like I get the idea that it's saying I want to be an artist who is fully named for one, like one single name, right? As a band, mm -hmm. I could say all of my music is under one project. A bunch of people say I'm doxxed. Here's my new band. Why? Because I don't mm. want you to think about it as mm. the same as the last band. Why do you band. think people make side projects? No, I'm saying exactly. Totally. Why? Because they say, I don't want the association with what you heard before. But as but an artist, I'll be an anon. It. But they're still part of it. So no, they're no, still no, You don't need to let people know. No matter what, if people know it's a side project, it's associated with you, that it colors your perception of the first time you hear it. You can say, I'm a person who doesn't want that coloring of perception. That is, that is an okay thing as an artist to say. I disagree. You can do that. I think that I, I don't respect anyone that doesn't want to put their own name on. It's no, like, not your own name. I have multiple I names. See, we're, 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 I got we're a bunch back. of names. I've come full circle. I mean, I, I, I <laughs> I'm still page. mad at you. I feel like there's a, well. Well, I remember um, Slime Sunday did, uh, do you remember when he used, he like wanted to test something, but he, I think he had asked on his feed, like, should I do it under a different brand that I publicly declare as my own or do it as an alt, an experiment? And I think he decided, and it was, I forget what he, he did it openly, but I think on like a separate wallet, separate contract, like very clearly, this is me and this is an experimental yeah. brand that I'm going to do. So that was kind of interesting because he was saying, I'm going to experiment. I don't want it under my main brand. I want to see where it goes, but I don't want to, you know. It also makes you more relatable. Involved. Like that's a human experience of trying something new, right? I mean, I don't know. I like when artists <laughs> do, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm the minority here. Like, You're not like minority. I hate that. I well, hate that. Well, I mean, sorry, but. And then we also have the, what was it, the, the Pale Moonlight? Anyone see that one? The what? Oh, it was the what piece happened? that, I love him, 787 collected it. It was mm -hmm. an anonymous. account. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Pull up the 787. <laughs> yes, he got tricked. I love it. Oh, yes. I'm, I'm tricking him all the time. I'm doing it all the time. Here's really? some new art. I'm in Photoshop just going filter uh, one, filter two, filter three. So he bought it. Oh, that was a, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so real quick, real quick. The context is, is 787 put out a tweet up. Uh, Saying like, oh, I like this art. Someone shilled him and he goes, I actually like it. I'm buying it. And then someone was like, hey, uh, that, that was stolen in a filter, a Photoshop <laughs> well, filter. He was like, well, it fine. It wasn't stolen. It was like a 1800s, like public Appropriated? Yeah, yeah, appropriate. With appropriate. It was CC0. Appropriate. Right from our appropriation space, didn't it? It was CC0. But, but yeah. it was created public by domain. an artist alt account. But yeah, it was an alt. I mean, Okay. It has all the signs of it. Why, why, why anyone would buy art from some random alt that just popped up in 2024 <laughs> like, is beyond me. Like, I don't know. I mean, yeah. I will yeah. say there are some artists that... But I thought you're just supposed to like the art. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Patrick looks, he goes, goes Who's, who are they following? How many followers do I have? Let's look at their Twitter <laughs> ad impressions. Okay, maybe I'll buy the art. Oh, I see an alt. It's got two followers. So here's, here's, <laughs> here's the problem is the space is just obsessed with what, what does it look like. There it is. And what, it's, what it looks like is relatively <laughs> worthless. Like, oh, show, it. Jeez. like our, it's all going to come down to concept. Like you got to be saying something with your work. Otherwise, your work is worthless. And AI is just going to accelerate our path there. And I feel like people are just... 
people are leaning into brands as the aesthetic that they stick with. So you have even people at the very top just grinding out the same thing again and again and again, as long as it keeps selling and remarkably it does. It's just a brand. Are you saying, wait, 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 it's you, conceptually wait, shit. Did you say that, that yeah. AI is going to accelerate conceptless art? Is that what you're saying? No, AI is going to accelerate a transition into, it's going to commoditize aesthetic. If you can create any aesthetic you want very easily, then the lack of friction in creating something that looks cool or what you want is going to drive people to actually have to create something that means something. But what about people that have been making things in the style of other artists for literally decades? I don't care what they're making. If you're saying something interesting, I'll listen. But if you're, it doesn't matter what you made. It's like, why did you make it? Yeah, What's I, the story? What makes it good art? Tell me that. No one talks about in the space. People no. just well, like, well, because oh, they're not allowed to. Also. Pretty picture. Correct. But no, yeah. you've lowered the barrier so much. It's okay, so I want to <laughs> copy Picasso. Back in the day, yeah. you oh, take some work. Now I go, I want to do Picasso, but I want to be all baseball players. <laughs> Got it. Mid journey. I want to do Picasso. Yeah. That's pretty good, though. We that is, go, that that is a space right there. Oh, I decided yeah. to. Yeah. I decided to bring bring baseball players into this Picasso piece, and I just felt like it touched me. So that's why I decided. To it do was it. work at one point, yeah, and now it is infinitely easier. And so whatever it might be, I've heard the death of aesthetics discussed before. I just feel like the space needs to be better. Um, and, you know, I, I talked to Pat about this too. I mean, you did say like our collectors are in the space or, you know, those that participate in the space were just early. And that's probably why there is this difficulty of like, you know, ex having standards, right? When it comes to certain things as in concept or being able to explain why you did something. I think for me, that's like the, the, the minimum. And unfortunately we haven't even reached that. It's just like, you know, sometimes artists putting out work in being able to say, hey, I did this because, versus, versus telling me about the process. Cause I'm like, okay, cool, I understand. Well, we don't but, have right, like we don't have enough people writing about artists in space. We don't have enough artists getting their stories yeah, this, out it's, there. It's, it's, we don't have any curators putting on interesting shows, just the same group of super artists again and again and again. You know, like we don't have enough. No, that's it, we'll not get true. there. We'll get there eventually, <laughs> but we just need a lot more people giving context for the artists in space. And I think it's ultimately how you have decentralized discoverability is you just need a lot more people talking about the artist because right now what do you have you have what what sold last week that's how we see we're gonna get the newsletter you know once a month once a week or whatever it's gonna shill blast one week and it's gonna talk about an artist the next week you know like that's how uh, I if, mean, Ed, they're, if they're, Ed laughs I, I, that's my that's I look at every week I learn about art all the top Patrick, art accounts say this sold for 13 Patrick, this sold know, for money this sold for two you know there are people that are writing so about art it's just who, the the messenger a lot there's of people, not there's not nearly enough people writing about art in the space there are, but there there's are a like lot, seven. and they've been doing it for a long time. No, there's but not. Wait, wait, wait. You can't say there's a lot. There's a couple that have been doing it consistently, but no one cares about them, that's, right? right? That's like, the issue. It doesn't matter how many But it's small. It is small. It right click save is killing it, there's, but there's no a, one's reading it, like, except just, for the couple art nerds. There are thousands and thousands of artists, and there are a handful <laughs> of writers. The problem that. is, is writers aren't paid in the space. And the artists don't want them because they think they're gatekeepers. That's that's a gross generalization. It's true, though. No, they they the artists are You don't want you don't want to be written about. I disagree. I think most, art, most artists I know would appreciate that and do want to see more of that in the space. They want to be talked about. They just want to be talked yeah. about well, at no, all. I think there's know. a lot of people that genuinely yes, Troy. kind of like stumbled into the art, <laughs> have discovered they love the oh, arts. Art. They might not have, uh, have art history knowledge, but they want to learn more about it. They want to get figure out how to get more yeah. involved. Um, I'm someone who's largely self-taught, but I would... When we lived in Northern California, I would drop into all the photography galleries and ask them as many questions as I could. And that's really how I learned. And it's, it's so hard to find that information. It's like, unless you have an MFA, go to a school and study it. Like if you suddenly decide you want to be an artist and pursue the arts, like where do you go to learn? And I think there are a lot of people that have stumbled into an art career and have discovered this is something they want to pursue. They are passionate about it, but they don't have that history or that knowledge. And they, they are here, and the ones, especially here in the Bear, I think a lot of them do want to continue learning. And I've seen they will show up to spaces and try to learn more. And there will be ones where people will talk about art history about certain artists, and they will show up, and they do want to listen. And so it's, you know, there's a big DJ community out there, too, that, you know, they just like the price. Yep. But there well, are a lot of people out here who do want to get Real quick, uh, you want to grab that, just that, talking about that mic right there. Absolutely. Yes, you can pull it out, too. Uh, Boom, thank you, thank you. There we go. Boom. What, what? Uh, Shit, let's go. Is it on? <laughs> yep, it's on. We got you. Hi. Hi. Uh, can we can we talk a little bit also about the the ways of discovery in this uh, space where uh. it's largely social media platforms? And so that's a whole thing. Like that's a whole animal in and of itself. Like there's not really the uh, motivation or the ability to have these sorts of conversations 
on a platforms that move a mile a minute where everything is just like, you know, the, what is it? The, uh, the whatever is the currency. My brain is failing me. I went to sleep at 4 a.m. I have two kids, blah, blah. Um, uh, you know, like there's just not a whole lot of space for that. So how do we create that space um, in a world where everything is moving so fast, largely on social media platforms, how, how do we do that? Well, I think exactly, I agree with everything you said, mm -hmm. no notes. Um, I think that right now, like you look at, you look at, you look no at- No notes, he's professor, he's A. Notes. You can look, you can look at who, who can be successful in the space. Uh, it's the artist who can also run a three ring circus, right? You have to be able oh, to yeah. juggle the social yeah. media. You have to do all the things, the drops, the burn, blah, 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 blah. Like, no, most artists don't have that skill set. And uh, I think the artists, the artists that do are the ones that have bubbled up and you look at the quality of work and you're like, oh, I, I get it now. It's because they can run the circus. I can run a circus, it's just, I got lucky. Um, but no, we need a lot more writers. We need a lot more people talking about the art because there's so many artists with very interesting perspectives and very interesting work that just don't have whatever it is to be able to bubble up on social media. It, it has nothing to do with their work. It has nothing to do with their stories and artists. It just literally has to do with how the information gets out to the public. Uh, we have yeah. a lot of work to do. Someone, yeah, should, like, someone should start a foundation to help discoverability. Well, yeah, there uh, should be a lot of foundations. And it should be on the board. <laughs> a lot of people yeah. want to fund these foundations yeah. because they're too busy trying to put in eardrops. But, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> but like, like to, to be quite honest, I had a, a nice conversation with someone. It was very short today, very short. And they felt like I was being disrespectful um, because they were doing a piano. I'm not gonna say, and it was gonna be at a big institution. And I saw the panel, and I was like, there's no, it's not diverse, there's nothing, I'm like, what, what's going on here? And they were like, oh, I just felt like I was doing enough, but I'm like, and then I'm like, I was trying to be honest, I'm like, no, there's nothing there. And I gave them su suggestions and things like, things like that. What I'm trying to get to is, like, even sometimes you have people doing these things, and they're not even thinking about what they're doing. They're going to major institutions, they're going to things that are going to get a huge amount of people and they're representing us bad. What do you, like, and this is where, and it's really unfortunate because we're so good in this space as being yes men or yes women or yes people just saying, yeah, that's fine or whatever. But sometimes, I, and I don't know if I can be as loud as enough as possible to just say, nah, this can't, this can't work. We can't do this, it's not helping us. It's not really helping us at all. Because we, we end up here talking about like, oh man, we don't have, we don't have good media. We don't, we're not talking about art the way we should be talking about it. Yeah, because we're also going out in these panels or these things out here, and we're not talking about them good either. Like it's, and, and so people look at this space like, what is, what is this? Like it's <laughs> literally they're like, okay, you guys are making a whole bunch of money, cool. Like, and when there's so much more to this space, and so when you have a lot of us artists doing things, it's like, man, how do we find a good balance of like trying to report the dope things that we're doing um, versus you know trying to just talk about what the media loves as in like the noise of financial. Like th that's just what the space is. And I'm trying, I think all of us have been trying to fight that. And I don't know if there's like, we need more writers and things like that, but they just need more. We need to be better. I don't know. I'm I think, just, I well, think, it, well, I think it's just, I think it's exactly that. I, I think, I think <laughs> we're not appreciating what we actually have potentially with this space. It's not about a handful of people making money in this space. That's, it's happened before. It's, it's irrelevant, you know, Ultimately, you know, we have given access to art markets to people all around the world in a different way than they've ever had before in art. Uh, whether that's collecting, whether that's creating, you look at stories of like Osanachi, you look at like yeah. IXLs, you, we've given, we've, people have the ability to participate and we've democratized art in a different way than it's been, than we've had before. And I mean, ultimately we can choose to embrace that and make choices that promote that or not. You know, we can just keep letting all the value accrete to the seven dudes making money, or we can actually kind of embrace the potential that we have in the space and like s take actual actions to, like with what Ed's saying, like it's actually talking to people, hey, why is your panel not diverse? Why are you talking about that? We actually all have to kind of do our little part to just help promote that I'm and make that an important I'm thing. Too okay, so, so yeah. real quick, guess before you go, because <laughs> yeah. there, there's yeah. there, like, we talk about this like, uh, how do we like, I don't know, talk about our art more and like we talk about these old traditional medias, we are sucking so bad at appealing <laughs> to the base Zoomers out there. We have the craziest art stories ever. We experience them alone. We go to Paris. We do things alone. We film a dumb montage of it, and there's no YouTube video saying, "Did you know what the fuck this you know artist what? did?" Did that like that's not true? Last, I mean, sorry, majority of that is actually true. Okay. Um, but last year, February, 
Black History Month, I did a dope ass event, um, and it was a music event. And that was so good. Thank you. That was so thank good. you for those that came. Yeah. And it was not only Web3 participants, it was everybody. And they legit, I had people crying out there saying, wow, thank you so much for just this, this experience. And that was exactly what I was trying to do. And I was trying to say, hey, this is just, we're in Web3, but we're also the same. We're, we're experiencing art. Unfortunately, though, we don't have enough people trying to do that. It's like we're trying to appeal to something through financial. But right now, right now on YouTube, there are videos going viral teaching someone about Picasso putting out a particular piece because the person took it and made the story interesting enough. That stuff is happening every <laughs> six months in Web3. There's a story that is so fucking good about art where there's intrigue and they stole this and it meant that and all of a sudden this happened and like Matt Cain could have had it before a couple months ago. There's been multiple artists who put out stories that are amazing if we packed them up and then we're just like, when is Forbes going to write about us? And then Forbes is like, they sell JPEGs and it's like boring as shit. About that conversation, like yeah. we need TikToks, not Forbes coming in. Okay, Shots sorry, Cass. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, Forbes. like, visibility is a huge thing that artists always ask for. But if you think about it, too, it's like we do need a team, and we get into these little silos. And that's why you see the most, like, the successful projects are projects. The artist draws. They have a marketer. They have someone who's well-spoken on the X spaces. And, like, those are the ones that are kind of robustly, like, doing a business or coming from a project to being a business to maybe being a brand, right? We're not quite there yet. Yeah, We're trying yeah. to do that. But it's like you really need, like, a whole team. But unfortunately in this space, I feel like it's going to be the artist that's going to have to start to – speak up to have like I really want more individual artists to also be successful and sometimes we just have to get out of that shell and that and that silo and not just to cross promote I think projects are like oh we'll talk to this team you have some of our community we'll do that we'll do a mint together we'll throw a trait on our thing you throw a trait on yours it just it hits a superficial level that just doesn't sustain right so I feel like in this space we're always really good at community acquisition, but not community development. Because then we get excited, we help each other for a little while, and then we go down silos, and then we don't circle back. And oh, we're too oh. small to do that. And so we just need more conversations of like creators and devs building the right things together. And yeah, it's, it's gonna be a process, but that silo part is what's also killing us. All right, let's, let's, uh, let's go to the next question. Thank you, though. Nice seeing you again, Patrick. Good seeing Be you again. Too. What's up? So What's up, my mom was playing her card game, and we had to tell her this is the biggest show in the world. We can't miss it to watch her four grandchildren. Uh -oh. So we kind of <laughs> – so you guys, if, if she's watching it, you guys have to be oh, hype. What's up, Grandma? Oh, she likes we had to sell, it. We had to sell her on coming. So I have a question for you all because as a software engineer, I think about a lot of this stuff differently, and I want you guys to humor me on this concept. So I'm working on this piece called The Six Evolutions because that's how I teach the web. It's not like it's, it's an evolution of the internet where web one allow us to actually read the internet, web two allow us to actually see the internet, Facebook and those different services, web three is allow us to touch the internet. Web four in my assessment is going to be a way we can actually merge with the internet, nanotechnology, what Neuralink was actually doing. Then web five, we can become the internet. So I see these, uh, uh, these <laughs> some of us. <laughs> it's gonna be crazy, I see. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine though, like we have these, these brain computers, if I come in proximity to you, and I like those shoes, I can actually connect to whatever you give me access to and perhaps actually order those shoes. And then the last one, my wife behind me, she called it a Web 6 where we can feel the internet. Like she wants a world where, and she probably invented this because of me, I need you to feel what I'm actually thinking. A lot you of always talk charges, so much. Yeah. So wow. what do you guys think? Because we, it took a while to get from Web 1 to Web 3, but I see us graduating from Web 3 to Web 4 and perhaps 5, 6, whatever, very, very fast in, in the advent of technology, especially with stuff like Sora. Yeah. Uh, AI kills uh, uh, Web 5. AI ends us. Right around Web 5. We don't get to Web 6. Yeah. Is what you're ah, saying. We don't we're make saying it. Web 5 is the last one. It's a Web 6 feet under. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, no, that's gr it's great to see you, Yummy. I just wanted to go back. The, 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 there was a point in uh, where writers, um, not, not for art, but in, in Hollywood, like say 20, 25, maybe 20 years ago, 15 years ago, when you were done your script and you press saved and you spent all your time on it, you're good to go, it's ready for market, your group has read it, got notes, Patrick, got notes, uh, got notes, and you put it back out, ready to, no. Oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> I damn, they say you gotta go. That, Web I don't, even, I don't even know what that sound is. No, no, it's okay. That was you were giving educational content. <laughs> keep yeah. The more you know, NBC. The more you no. sound, keep going. And, and so back on track, is that when, you, when there was a point when you were done, 
the, produ- the, the a director would say, or a, your agent would say, or somebody, your mentor would say, now go produce it. And you were like, I just fucking wrote this. I'm the writer. I got to produce it too. So my long-winded point is, is that, yes, we need curators and, uh, and writers, especially writers in this space. But I think, you know, certainly some introverted artists who don't want to go on spaces, and but they've gone to high school at least and write sentences could do not their own critiques, but also their own narratives. Please don't do that Um, because I'm not done. I'm a serious guy. So it's uh, I I think they should meet halfway because we all have to at some point. You've got to dig in. Uh, Everybody's in their comfort circle. And this is where you're supposed to be. You're in this circle. And Uh, that's just a a, a stark way of looking. So so first first and second. Um, No, I think I think the path of technology is going to be heavily tacked by development of AI uh, as we progress towards general probably five, ten years out. So. I think how the evolution of all that goes, I think, I think we're in a very interesting point. The world will change faster than ever has changed before over the next five or 10 years. So grab your popcorn. Uh, it's gonna get terrible and wild and great all at the same time, hopefully <sighs> balanced. Um, so I think, I think ultimately <laughs> no one knows, it's really just gonna be down to AI development and who gets there first. Uh, and even quantum computing is going to have a lot of effects on cryptography alone. So that changes the whole s- scope of how we actually view a cryptocurrency. But I have a question for you, follow on, Patrick. So what do you think about AI avatars? Like the, perhaps there are being seven different Patricks. So I tap into a particular product. I can ask a particular question. And Patrick 7 may be different from Patrick 6. And you can deploy yourself across the I'm actually the web. chilling at home right now. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, well no, done. no, that's all for me. Yeah. I love it. Thank no, you. Yeah, yeah. It don't exist. 1980. Um, and uh, yeah, so Troy, no notes. <laughs> Lucky God, I've never gotten no notes. What's, what, what's that? <laughs> what I was trying to point out to to uh, I, I don't know his name, it's Durant. Um, that's Web Five is right there, and that's the end of humanity, unfortunately. Right, that's what you're okay. Here. Anyways, um, I think it's important the the topic we we're talking about. You know, thinking about software engineering and and you know. Just in general, inclusivity of this space. You know, we talk about writers, we talk about foundation, we talk about all these different things. But you look at foundation right now, um, beautiful UI, terrible for inclusivity, probably the worst. Um, and I am guilty because I use it. Um, I think it's important for us all to recognize those things. Um, and how we improve that is we improve it via data, like just looking at the actual data, being more inclusive to what's displayed on, on these websites. And those are things that we just don't care about. Same as artist stories right now, unfortunately, unless they have a following that's over 10K. Um, you know, and, and those realities is just stuff we have to accept. You know, I think there's some people in this room who have done a really good job of continuing to bring those up, continuing to speak up for people, and just want to say I really appreciate those people who do those things. We're tired. Thank you, man. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I'm kidding. No, I, I, I Cheers. Oh. <laughs> you got it. Sounds are coming from somewhere. We don't know where. Keep going. Oh no, I was gonna say shout out to you. And 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 yeah, in regards to like the, the AI question, or was it the AI qu- software? Anyway, yeah, AI is gonna finish us, unfortunately. Yeah, if um, you guys ever need any books uh, about that, we keep a lot of and them. And it sounds here. so we say it so <laughs> casually, but yeah, no, I, I will say, uh, speaking of like, I don't know, AI and art and stuff like that, because I'm definitely pretty deep into the field right now, and I'm pretty deep in, I guess, in the philosophy of AI and how it is going to end the world. And, you know, we probably have this space because I was really deep into that five years ago, and I was like, oh, AI is going to end the world. I got to have some fun for the last couple of years. Let's get a space where we get the nerds together. I, I will say that everyone keeps talking about AI replacing basic stuff right now, and we do have a couple, we have, I would say maybe five to ten years to really surf some of the most insane creative waves we possibly ever can do. The things you can produce right now, anyone who actually is using Midjourney and Dolly and once Sora is available, it is an amazing, creative, beautiful field that's fun to play with. It is gonna kill us, but we have four to, like we have, I don't know, four to eight years where it's gonna be beautiful and fun. And if you're participating, it's who knows, maybe you're gonna be able to afford the trip to Mars to keep you alive. And I'm pretty excited. I'm terrified for Los Angeles with the advent of Sora. What does that even mean, Ex- Expound. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, so much of the local economy is built on the infrastructure that supports oh, yeah. the uh, movie, film, TV industry. Oh, yeah. uh, well, a yeah. lot of a lot of those positions are going to be very easily replaced with with AI. Well, uh, Sora has can do so much of the production work. So there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be really kind of hard up for work 
So I, I will uh, note that if you actually case. get dive deeper into any of these so. things here, there are other jobs that will become more prominent, which is correcting the AI right now. People who are like, it's like, it's like Photoshop is just as important as ever. You're using generative fill, but you still have to make all of those corrections because everyone's laughing at no. you if you fuck it up. And same thing for Sora. There, People who are good editors and whatnot. There's, there's copy editors for AI that are yep. making like five, six, seven thousand dollars a month doing freelance copy editing just for AI. Do you know how much the person who fixes fingers makes? It depends. <laughs> it depends on how fast they are. And I'm not stack. saying I'm not saying that at a certain point, like they won't be like, we don't need you to fix it anymore. Yeah, right. You know, which is fine, <laughs> right? But like, let's all make our money and build <laughs> like our bunkers we need you for like with that money. Yeah. But in <laughs> software, that's how it's been for a thousand things. Where we have to build this thing up. Now this does it for you. Oh, I guess you're out of a job. No, I do way more now. Every time we progress in technology, we do more. At one point, we literally like one person would run a server. Right now, if you're a DevOps engineer, it's like, yeah, cool, 10 million servers. That happened over the last 10 years. We learned that. It did not go, no, your job's not anymore. Like, dude, I have to do way fucking more now. People will do more. People will fix fingers on a thousand photos in a day versus one person fixing one set of fingers a day. And yes, the people who don't keep up, they won't have jobs, but who wants a finger fixing job? So The best cabalas have someone break the fingers and your homie is fixing it and you just keep trading Bingo. over Bingo, there you hey, go. That's you're the welcome, best. Man. That's way to yeah, yeah. That's oh, way to make some money here. Okay. okay, I I think with that we've kind of this is a beautiful conversation here. Uh, we do have to get to shit coining tonight. So if you guys didn't know, we uh, do a second part of the show, which is the show ends. We go to our after party at Vibes Co. And we're probably gonna you know I don't know buy some art, buy some shit coins, uh, drink some drinks, fight wait, more wait, about these things. But before we wrap up, I want to make sure everyone on the panel has got just. What's going on? It's and over? This is really fun. We can keep going. We're going to go later. The problem is we put the stream off, and then we say more controversial things. That's why it's called IRL Alpha, okay? You don't put everything on camera. Ed, what's going on? What's oh, the next man, thing we're looking so to look forward to? Thanks so much for having to? me. This is really fun. Uh, I know I'm usually in the audience yeah, yelling at y'all, but um, yeah. thanks so much for, for this. Um, yeah, I'm Ed Balloon. Uh, my ordinal drop on BTC will be, let's hope it's next week, um, but, you know. I'm not too sure yet, but please keep the notifications on on me. I, I can be annoying though, but I'm, I try not to be as annoying. I'm, you're not gonna get any portal tweets from me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, my drop is coming out and, and, and yeah, I'm not gonna go on a rant anymore, but it was so great being here and talking to y'all about art and Web3 and- Thank you, Ed Balloon. Quick, quick, quick round of applause, okay? You're the best, seriously. <laughs> Dude, War Hoddle also, first time on the show. So good to have you. What's going on? What to look forward to next? First time caller, long time listener, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Um, for me, the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, why not? Um, it is a pleasure to be here. <laughs> I, I just, I think um, foundationally, like the, the anchor that is IRL Alpha, um, the Thursday nights, just the space in general. It's a, hu it's a huge deal. Um, as Cass, we were talking about earlier, like, Again, coming out of lockdown, there was Thursday night meetups in Venice Beach at Hinano's beautiful dive bar. The best. Yeah, where, you know, it's like the same sort of, we have conviction, we're unsure, we're not unsure, and just all coming together on a what is a very strong common interest. Um, so thank you. And then uh, looking at the screen right now, so, Again, you know, as war hodl as a concept, um, the way that I've ripped on pop art, more or less, uh, I'm launching a brand this year, or actually very soon, um, called Anti Alpha. Ouch, but. Damn. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. But, but not in a dark way. <laughs> not in a dark way. Um, and that's riffing on the culture, tastefully riffing outside of Web3. And ultimately, um, there's two reasons, but the impetus as to why anti-alpha is that uh, having lived through the ICO era of spending an exorbitant amount of time on Bitcoin talk and also Discord, what ultimately ended up as the best alpha wasn't ever labeled that way. And I think that the term over the last year or two has been completely blown out of proportion. And I say that uh, politely, you know, it's like, on this Twitter space, wait till the end and we're going to drop alpha. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I have a tough time taking a lot of it seriously. It's just, you, you hear something, you come across something, it becomes a hunch. 
and you just pounce on it and it ends up being like this whoa obviously there's more there's stronger signals but anyway that's just the impetus behind the naming um and again having fun with it so that there's a couple different layers to it but again thank you i mean just even being able to share that um coming and, soon and to hang with y'all thank you quick round of applause for war huddle yeah. amazing super yeah. exciting here Cardellucci, we did it. You were on the show, so very excited. Hi. Here, what's going on next? Um, working on my plates. So Ooh. these are, it's a reference to the history of photography. Um, it's an ongoing body of work. It's all, my vision for this was it's all on one smart contract. I want everyone to be able to come to one place to find my hopefully lifelong body of work. So this is a, as long as I will be able to mint on it, uh, this awesome. is where my work is gonna go. So it's kind of fun. It's good. It's, the ebbs and flows of life. I'm gonna see where it takes me, explore different categories and subjects. So the first 12 were true one of ones. It's really what I was feeling at the time, what I wanted to experiment with. Um, 13 through 18 were dropped as a set. And then I'm working on kind of what comes next. It you know, could be a collection, you know, larger set of plates, could be a one of one. So I'm, fine. I'm liking the idea of experimenting, but having this kind of home for my lifelong body of work. You don't have to make a retrospective, it will be everything that. on my contract um i almost look at it as like a book and there will be different chapters but it will be all cohesively in one place and i'm still experimenting with how that's going to play out long term but i think it's just so interesting like my photography is very traditional my the photographs i take have not changed i've always been a digital photographer so that's why this space felt so natural but when you look at the history of photography it's just prints and multiples like very rarely were there one of one photographs traditionally they were just you know Replicate like Ansel Adams, there are about a thousand of some of his most notable prints. Um, the most expensive ones are just the rare ones or the largest ones. Um, so there's just this interesting perception of photography that it's it's original art. I don't think anyone argues that, but it's almost not valued in the same way. And when I stumbled upon this space and seeing people open to the idea of original photograph and especially digital, which I think film can still be minted and viewed as the same as well. And a lot of film photography, I forget, with like C prints aren't archival, so why not put them on the blockchain? Um, but it's just an interesting way for, and photography has been through so many changes from film to digital and now to the blockchain. It's just so interesting how it survived all these different phases through the medium. Um, and I just think this shines a new light on how people view and value photography as a fine art form. So I think it's very exciting. And it's, sometimes I feel a little bit overlooked right now, but just because of my love and history of photography that I've been studying, I just, long term, I just think it's something really exciting that when people really understand it and view photography in a new light, I hope it you know, kind of blossoms or has you know, some new energy come to it. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. I'm saying 2024. Well, I'm, I'm manifesting it. The Toshin book's coming. Okay, it's going to be the, okay, fuck a retrospective. Okay, it's all going to go. In one I need a few more years on that. Yeah, yeah okay. We'll, we'll yeah, try. Yeah. It'll be the mini one. We'll do another one. Okay. Patrick, so good to have you back. What's going on next? I am going to encourage healthy dialogue on Twitter. Woo, okay, great, beautiful. <laughs> Boom, okay, okay, okay. I'm guessing that's it, anything else? Okay, beautiful. Thank you, everyone. We're gonna go to the after party now. Vibes Co., it's a walk away. We'll see you next week. See you guys in Denver, bye. Thank you, we did it. Play some music, thank you. We did it. Eight five four four. The code is eight five four four. Michael Lyons. Michael Lyons.
Michael Lyons, the code is 8544. Yo, yo, yo. Oh, what's the panel code? 8544. Are you doing post show? Let's do it. What's going on? Let's start with you. How about that? Good, how are you? It won't be a long one this time. Yeah. I'm going to start with you. Where's Michael? Um. What's up, buddy? How you doing? doing good, man. About to do this post show in a second once the camera comes down. Hanging out tonight? Freeze. So I'm not going to be able to hang out. Understand? We're doing a short night tonight, anyhow. Yeah, time to. We're going to Denver in the morning. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing artist all the way around. And I'm like, she's really interested in getting Oh yeah, love that. Sweet. What's up? Well, next week, uh, back at it, man. We're gonna go to Denver in the morning. Oh, you're going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yes. All right. Ready? Yeah. Let's look, you wanna sit and ch chill for a second? Let's, let's chat for a second, my friend. What? Oh. Oh, it looks like we're on. Yeah, we're on. Sweet. All right, man, so uh, we're with uh, Show Me, the uh, in-house DJ, and I got this one right here, so I think you'll be okay. We're good, we're good. Yeah, man. So, uh, awesome, dude. I've been uh, plugging your spaces lately, man. Um, DJ and Social Hour, DJ and Social Club. Yeah. You guys yeah. are killing it out there, uh, getting we're... lots of attendance and uh, lots of great info, man. Tell me tell me how it's going. Yeah, we're doing all right. We're kind of just like pre-starting things, trying to kind of get people to find a place where they can come. We kind of came out of the Utes, D-Gods community, and really wanted to sort of give those people a space at night to kind of talk about the news and what was happening. And then um, honestly being here uh, for X amount of years now, it really has shown me what's possible yep. when it comes to good speakers, good panels. And when you're on spaces, the one thing you really want to do is have a lot of people on stage that know what the topic is. Um, and so my goal really is to have a bunch of people uh, this next year on our spaces on the panel. Come on through. Yeah, come on, baby. Um, you know, uh, as, as many people as we can that, that are on top, it's basically Solana, whether it's Ordinals, whether it's all these different things, but we're really excited to kind of dive into it and uh, not only be doing our spaces, but we also have our clothing that we're launching um, coming out pretty soon. It's a Web3 culture brand, and uh, we actually partnered with Stevie Williams. Nice. So Yeah, so Stevie's doing some stuff with us. We're going to be diving into like um, NFC chips, making a lot of like digital goods and allowing you to kind of like download your items and stuff. And the guy behind the camera is doing some things as well with all that. So really well, excited. It's, it's a family affair when, when, it's, when it's here. It, it well, really let's, is. Uh, let's uh, tap into the DGen uh, alpha, right? And the DGen spirit. Like what, what, is, what are you guys primarily focused on right now? What's, what's the market uh, looking at? Where are you guys spending most of your time? Because obviously it's about making money right now, right? Let's just get straight to the point. Okay. If you're a DGen, you're not DGening into community and like powwows, you're DGening into making money. So what are you guys focused on? What's the meta right now that we should be looking at? Honestly, it's it's whitelist is the meta. Oh. It's always been the meta, okay. but if you're chasing a public a lot right now, you're already going to be a, a 2x or you know into something. Um, perfect example was today the uh, puppets, yep. right? Puppets were huge, but if you were on the early list, it was already a you know a three X or something before public. So 
I think the meta is just making sure you're finding stuff early, just like with Cap, uh, you know, the coins too. Bird Eye on Solana. Solana right now is shitcoin city. Um, if you're not mogging on ETH, just go to Sol, go to Blast, uh, set up your wallets and kind of pinpoint things. That, I mean, group group chats are always going to be the alpha. Okay. I don't really do anything without listening to 10 other friends or if I say something and everyone goes, yeah, but look at this shark play. You know, like on Solana right now, there's these sharks where you can basically uh, take a loan out on your shark through the protocol, earn points for the airdrop, and since the shark is a Solana NFT that's allowing you to do this stuff, you're basically the price of your shark is going up. Got it. Well, uh, let's back check on the whitelist because I think it's a, a yeah. great a great tip. How, how does one get on the whitelist? What's the like? What's the mechanism? What's the the pathway to do that? The easiest way I would say, if you don't know anybody or don't have friends, start locking into your morning spaces or evening spaces. Uh, whether it's our DGEN Social Club space, but more importantly, whether it's like TDA, Daily Alpha gives away a ton of white whitelists all the time to their community um, and while you're participating and being there. Um, go on stage. Are these uh, raffles most of the time or are they handing them to people? They're raffles. Okay. A lot of time they're raffles or like if, you, if you're on stage talking all the time, you'll end up meeting other people that are adding you in group chats. You know, like there's a group chat, probably not even supposed to talk about it, but like the printing press. Okay. Right. The printing press is, is our fire chat. It's always printing every day. You know what I mean? Uh, Gary Gensler's in there helping us. He brought the machine and he's just printing them. So it's not like we're doing anything crazy in there, but you get every angle. So you get art plays. Like tomorrow there's a Solana art mint, right? That's going to like pop. Um, and so I, I, at the end of the day, it's just finding your people, sticking with, with your guns and kind of uh, not doing too much. We're going to hold you to it. What, what, what's popping tomorrow? What's still on art? We're going to check back next week and see if it pops. What, what are we looking at? I cannot think of the artist's name. That's okay. why I didn't even bring it up tonight. Got it. I'll look it up and put it in the, the IRL Alpha chat. Love but, it. But yeah, I mean, realistically, I think uh, the Lulus were a solid call because yeah. we knew they were going to cut it. Prices up on the Lulus. Even if you're able to get people to mint, you're able to earn money on that. Yeah, that's so interesting. So plays like that are kind of cool. But honestly, I mean, Ordinal's... Or, ordinals, like, it's, can argue that it, one. yeah, if, if, if I'm doing anything, it's selling some of my ETH plays that I have and trying to get monks before they go to half a Bitcoin. You know What's what up, I mean? Man. Love it. Stuff, yeah. Appreciate your time, bro. And that's uh, some great, some great tips, man. Have Appreciate that. You want to grab Margaret for me, actually? Let's, yeah. let's, let's go. We'll, we'll, we'll probably just do Margaret and uh, do one more. Oh, I'm going to squeeze by real quick. You want to jump on for a few minutes real quick? About what? Uh, just chat with you. You're, you're hanging out tonight, yeah? yeah. All right, cool. Really I'm squeeze like, by again. About, like, right here, right here. I don't know, just going to get you on camera, you know. Get me on camera. Say what's up, you know, because I mean, I, I just got to say, you know, um, uh, since getting to know you through IRL Alpha, well, actually, started at Quantum, uh, it's, just been, it's been fascinating uh, watching or hearing your voice, I guess you could say, you know, like just hearing your points of view, understanding more about your experience. Uh, all the different things you've done in the art world, I find fascinating. I find you an amazing artist. Anyways, what you're working on, what's what's in your world, what's happening? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for saying that. And I, I, I just want to say too, like, I even though I did come in like into NFTs like from an art background, like this space has been so welcoming. And like even when I didn't fully understand like what was going on, like. I was still, you know, I could still be here. I could still listen and chat with you guys after about anything. So I just want to always like, any, I, I always like cheer for you guys in, in all of LA. You know what I mean? Like from the from the end of Tuesday to the Bellum. You know what I mean? I'm like, you know, those guys. You bet. You got to go out and see them in Venice. But um, I mentioned earlier in the pre-show, I am working on a new release. Okay. It'll be out May 20, or March 25th. It's with Verse and Tender. So Tender's doing this really cool thing called Tender Tuesdays, starting this Monday. It's a 24-hour uh, ranked auction with a bunch of really talented, I would say we're all kind of emerging AI, artists working with AI, yep. different backgrounds. Um, we had a preview in Paris, which was really fantastic, at Gallery Dada. Um, wow. And uh, so it's, yeah, curated by Adam with, at Tender Art and, and releasing on Verse. So now, is Tender um, uh, Tezos still? No. Primary? Oh, they've expanded. I mean, I, that. I'm not. Sh actually, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm. I'm. I'm pretty sure it will because Verse works on ETH. So you're right. Yes, it's gonna be. It's gonna be. <coughs> Love ETH. that. Love that. Um, yeah, and, and it's exciting. Um, it's a smaller collection for me, but it is. Uh, we actually just named it today. Um, 
it's it's Los and Los Angelizing is what it's called. Um, awesome. Kind of a play on um, sp- uh, portmanteaus of like Californication, but also um, Adam and I discussed a little bit of this idea of evangelizing. Um, but I'm using AI as an opportunity to. Uh, evaluate the preconceived notions of Los Angeles and the juxtapositions um, and kind of AI's way of also being judged, right? It's a little bit about like, we all get a bad rep, right? Or like, Ellie gets a bad rep, AI gets a bad rep, so I'm marrying them together, kind of pushing them to the extreme because the the curatorial effort and the curatorial brief is more. Uh, well, I'll be curious to see. Yeah. I moved to LA two years ago, and I gotta say, it's lived up to every uh, expectation I thought. Yeah, and, and from the good and the bad, and uh, and the stereotypes. And you know, today. I was listening to Randy Newman's "I Love LA" on repeat all day today while I was making outputs, and I was like, God damn, this song really, this song is LA. It's so wow. great. Um, so I'm I'm excited about that. But you know, I, you know me, I just be out here doing stuff. We did the pastiche drop with Anacon Foundation. Um, that went went out a couple weeks ago, and. Uh, but other than that, yeah, I, I'm, I might, dare I say, like move back into photography soon. I'm not really, I'm not really sure. Don't call You'll me on that. You'll be ahead of the curve. Don't call me. Well, it hasn't done. You know, what I mean, well, yeah. I, I did say actually last spring this time I was like, next up after generative art is going to be AI, and then yeah. photography will come back in because AI will foster a new, a newfound appreciation for the photographic medium. And you can, Rebecca Lamis heard me say that on a rooftop bar, so she, you, she can she can back me, yeah, so. Oh. I think there's a lot to be discussed about uh, photography. We won't do it tonight, because it was actually a topic tonight we never even got to with Carlucci on the panel. But I think it needs but to be its own artist dump space, or, it, oh, and it's, or a It does, uh, a there's panel. a lot to argue about it, there's a lot to say about it, yeah. um, a lot of opinions about it, and, uh, but you know, I think it's uh, something we all can appreciate at the end of the day. Well, it's something that... Whether yeah, it's valuable it's, or not, I guess, you, is the main question. Exactly, it's ubiquitous, it's part of our everyday lives, and, and I, if you... If anyone watching this hasn't read Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction by Walter Benjamin, I suggest you pick it up. Or there's actually some good YouTube theory videos about it, but it, it, it kind of explores maybe, posits an answer of why people don't take photography seriously as an art form. I love that. It's yeah. awesome. Love your insights. Appreciate Thanks. you, Margaret. Thank Heck yeah. you. Appreciate you. All right, you. well, great job. Yeah. Hanging I'll out tonight? In yeah, yeah. For a bit. we will have fun in Denver. How much we, we, I think we're dying on battery here, folks. So. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love mountains. I like to go high in the mountains and it's snowy. I know, but, but it's a mile high city. Like, the, the altitude. It's it, fair. It gets me every time I'm there. That's be, fair. Be really careful. Appreciate that. Appreciate <laughs> No drugs over here. Well, the battery's almost dead, so we're going to close it out tonight. But, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week. A handful of us are going to be out in uh, East Denver tomorrow. Uh, celebrating, or Denver, in fact, most of us. But uh, we love it. Mr. Patrick Amidon, thanks for being here. Thank you. All right. Have a great night. See you guys next week. Yeah, I mean. Battery's almost dead. Good? Yeah. I got it.